Hi, this is Destiny from Desfix and welcome back to another video in the hotel management series using Django. We'll get started fixing a couple of bugs. We'll start off by disabling dates that are already in the past and we will also go ahead and add a prompt for when a user is trying to delete rooms from the session. Like a prompt that will say something like, are you sure you want to delete this room? Then if the user clicks on OK or yes, delete, then we'll go ahead and delete the room and show a success message. That is all we'll be doing. Hopefully you will enjoy the video and learn something new. So let's get started. You can begin by opening up your code editor and I want you to open up hotel, um, rather templates, hotel, then hotel detail HTML. But before we get started, open up your terminal and let's spin up the server by running python manage.py run server. So you can open up your browser on port 8000, okay? And I think that should be opening up over here. So the the thing that you want to do is locate where we have, um, a, just search for with forms. And the one I'm looking for is, let me, this one over here. Do you see where we have the check-in date and also the checkout date? You want to locate this session and we have to add a simple script over here. So you can actually write this script in your custom JS, or you can write it here, whichever way is okay, and it will work. You can also take this and put it at the bottom of the page, maybe somewhere here where we have all the scripts, okay? But for now, let me just write the scripts here so that I can quickly make references to any of the classes or attributes over here. So as you can see, this has loaded up. Now, when you open up one of the hotels over here, let's say I wanna open up this one, we definitely will get this error if a user is not authenticated. So to fix that error, I want you to open up the views PY for the hotel app and come over to hotel detail. You see over here where we say if request that user is authenticated, that is only when we want to pass the bookmark. Now, if a user is not authenticated, this bookmark does not exist. Hence this error that says, hey, I can't find the bookmark because a user is not logged in. So we also need to handle the case for when a user is not logged in. And for that, you need to pass an else statement over here, then say bookmark should be equal to, and since a user is not logged in, that means we will not be able to fetch their bookmark, just set the bookmark to none and save your code. And now this should reload the server and we will get back here and reload the page. See, the error is now fixed. All right, all good. Now, this is the section that we will be working on. When we click on this to select a date, we want to disable all the dates from 28 all the way to from 28 backwards. We want to disable all the dates and from 29th forward till whenever till some dates in the future, we want to leave that enabled. I hope that makes sense. So to be able to do this, open up the hotel detail HTML and over here in the script, the very first thing that we want to do is create a new date object. So I'll say today should be equal to new date. So this is how you create a new date object in, in JavaScript. Now you can go ahead and actually log today to see what it gives back to us. Save your code, open up your, your console, Control Shift I or F12 will open up your console, then reload your page. And now you could see the dates show up over here. Can you see this? Friday, March 29th, 2024. Then you can see the time over here and you can see this. All right, that is all good. So you can see today is 29th. So what we need to do is format this date to grab only this date over here. We don't need, we don't need the day. We don't need the time. We don't need all this GMT and the time format, okay? So how do we do that? The next thing will be to create a new variable and we will call this one formatted, formatted. Okay, let's just say formatted today, all right? And what we need to do is say today, which is this date over here, we pretty much grab this date and we wanna say to ISO string and to ISO string ha has a simple letter that actually split between the date and the time and that is called t so we want to split at t don't worry i will still explain this code when we split at t then we'll grab the first item there which will then give us the formatted date okay 
So with this now, if you get down here and you log formatted today, let's see what we have. We reload our page. Now you can see that we have 2024. Let me look for that. You can see that we have 2024, 03, 20, 29. That is pretty much the date that this accepts. So the next thing that we want to do is, so we want to say documents dot query selector and we want to select checkout date which means we need to add a class over here for this input that says checkout dash date do the same thing for the check-in date add a class that says check-in dash date then when you grab the checkout date class what you pretty much want to do is set the minimum date to be today which is formatted today. I don't know if this makes sense. So this means that, remember that this date is today's date. As soon as we open up this input, we want to set a minimum attribute. When you set a minimum, a minimum attribute to an input, if the type of the input is number and the minimum is five, that means the minimum number that can be typed into that input will be at least five. If the max is 21, that means the maximum number that can be typed into that input is at most 21. Now, the same thing applies for the date input. When you add a minimum date, now let's say the minimum is 14th of March. Then after 14th of March, every other thing um, below that will be disabled. And you can also add a max if you want. So from let's say you're adding a max from 14th to 29th. Every other thing at the back of 14, which is 13, 12, 11, will be disabled. And every other thing from 30, 31, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 will also be disabled. I don't know if that makes sense. Let's keep going and I will show you guys how this works. Now, I want you to also select the check-in date. I just duplicated this code and changed checkout to check-in. It's exactly the same thing. And we save this. So what we are pretty much doing here is using JavaScript to add a minimum attribute to this input. So you can actually just come over here and add min like this, then add the date that you want. So 309-2024, but that really does not make sense because you will have to manually edit this code every single day to update the particular date to today's date. That is why we are doing that automatically using JavaScript. We grab today's date, we actually format the date to how we want it to be, then we set the minimum attribute of the date input to the dates that we formatted. I don't know if this makes sense. So let's refresh our page, then I will explain what the code does. Now, when you open up any of this, you can now see that 28, 27, 26, all the way to, to um, 2023, 2022, 2021, and backwards have now been disabled. And a user can only start booking from today and to any time in the future. It's the same thing for this one too. A user can start booking from today to any time in the future. So this part of the code, today.iso string to iso string, the part of the code is calling the to iso string method on the today's objects that we created. The to iso string method is pretty much a JavaScript method that returns a string representing the date and time of a particular format. In this case, let me say a standardized format which is the ISO 8601 format. And it pretty much converts the dates to a string in the UTC time zone, which means it takes all that long dates that you guys saw in the beginning and converts it to something pretty simple like 23-01-2024, something like that. Then this part of the code to split is pretty much splitting the string that is returned by the to ISO string method at the character T. In, the, in this ISO 8601 format, which is the format of the date, the letter T, just like I said before, pretty much separates the date and time components of the string. So this split operation separates the date part from the time part. Then this one over here, which is the zero index, the part of the code pretty much accesses the first element of the array, which is returned by the split method. Since we split the string at T, the first item of the resultant array will obviously be the date part of the ISO string. So this element now contains the formatted date. That is why we called it formatted today. 
and hopefully you get an idea of how this works. That is pretty much it. That is working as expected. Now, the next thing on my list would be to actually work with formatting a room. So not formatting the room, but actually adding prompts when a user wants to delete a room. So let me quickly search for a room. Let me say I want to search for the king room. And before this, okay, let me add to selection. I'm adding one, two, and three. And let me quickly log in. So I want to log in from my admin. Um, there you go. I'm now logged in. So when I reload this page, you can now see that I am logged in and I have three items in my in my selected room. So if you open this up, you can see how this looks, right? As soon as you try deleting a room, when you click on this, it reloads or it actually shows the spinning icon and boom, that's out of the session. But we want to add a simple prompt. I'll say something like, are you sure you want to delete the room? And when we click on yes, we'll go ahead and delete the room. So what you want to do is open up your code and you want to open up the custom JS and scroll all the way to the delete section, which is this delete item from cart. And what we want to do is up here, I will add a swall.fire. Remember that we have configured suite alerts in the previous tutorials, which means we can use suite alert right now. So I'll say swall.fire and I want to add a title. The title could say something like, are you sure you want to delete this room? Are you sure you want to delete this room? Okay. And if you want, you could also add a text. So you could add a text that will say something like, you won't be able to reverse this. You won't be able to reverse this action or just this. And you can also add a, or add an icon. So let's add a warning icon. And you can also add, if you want to show the cancel button, you could say show cancel button, show cancel button, and it should be true or false. In this case, I will leave it as true. You can also add a color that you want the confirmation button to be and a color that you want the cancel button to be. So let's say confirmation button call or just confirm button color. And for this one, I want to make the color to be hash. Let's go with 3085D6, which should be some, okay, we'll see that later. And also the cancel button color, you could pretty much duplicate this one and change the confirm to cancel button color. And for this one, I need a red color. So you could just go with D33, okay? And also you can add the confirm button text confirm button text and this one should say something like yes delete it yes delete it okay and um, that is pretty much it so instead of running this code over here this ajax code that deletes the comments not the comments the room instead of running that code let's run the code after yes is been clicked over here on the suite alert so what we need to say is dot then then pass in a parameter called result, and I will check if results dot. Then this over here has an attribute called is confirmed. So is confirmed will be returned as true or false if this is clicked. So if results dot is confirmed is equal to true. This still means that result dot confirm is equal to true. Then we pretty much want to run this code. All right, it's as simple as that. So we get back here now, we reload this page and let's see what we have. So as soon as we click on this, okay, actually that got removed without triggering the code. So what is going on? Let me make sure that this code looks okay. This should be is confirmed. So if result dot is confirmed, um, everything looks okay to me. I save my code, I get back here. Let's give this a hard refresh instead. So control shift R to give it a hard refresh and we'll click on this. Now, can you see, it says you won't be able to revert this, but it seems not to show up the title. So what is the issue? Okay, see, this should be title and not tight. So T-I-T-L-E, okay? And after you've done that, you could reload your code again. You could give it a hard refresh. And when you click on this, see, it says now, are you sure you wanna delete this? If you hit cancel, see, it goes away. Or if you hit yes, delete, see, now it's gone. That is pretty much it, I guess. 
and everything is pretty much working as expected. If there is something else that you think we are missing, do drop it in the comment section and I will definitely make a follow up tutorial for that. In the next video, we'll get started working with Flutterwave and Paystack payment integration and that will be really amazing. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and learned something new. I hope to see you in the next one. Do consider dropping a like and also subscribing to the channel as it will really mean the world to me. You can also check out some of the courses in the description below as one of them might help you become even a better Django developer. I hope to see you in the next video. Until then, mad love. Peace out.